heck of a lot of fun Jeannie Robertson Oh, she's a heck of a lot of fun Jeannie Robertson Well, hello, everybody. This is Jeannie Robertson, and I'm in North Carolina on an absolutely gorgeous day. Can y'all see it out the porch window? It's beautiful. It's green. The sun's out. A little nippy, but uh, I am here for this weekly show that we do from noon until 1 Eastern time. We have a little problem. Last Sunday, I started putting up clips of Henry Cho, who is one of the funniest people out there. And is that Henry? Or are you just checking your phone? You, you scared me when you lifted. Uh, we played all five or six clips, actually six clips. And then this morning I put up his bit with Designing Women. I know we have drawn a big crowd because he is wonderful. However, in the middle of the night last night, we got an email from Henry. And he has a problem and is trying his best to get on and we'll cl click in here. And <laughs> What's that clicking noise? He will, cl will click in on us if he possibly can. They apparently have been hit by the flood in um, Nashville, Tennessee that hit this past week. And Henry is chairman of his men's ministry at their church. They are doing all sorts of things. The last we heard from Henry was about an hour ago. He was under a house, Patrick. He was un in a crawl space. Under in a crawl space trying to help somebody. And he is in charge of putting him. Well, I, I don't think he was pulling someone from, from the wreckage. No, but I think he week. was. Yeah, I think no. he may have been fixing a pipe. But Fixing a pipe. They've got all the men of their church working and he's in charge. So he's not real sure that he's going to get here. He's going to do his best. He's going to do his best. And so I know you're disappointed. I am too. But we will either have Henry today or we'll have him another time. In the meanwhile, the last hour, Tony, Patrick, and I have planned a program. And we think it'll be funny too. And we think he may click in any time. And um, he might have gone to boldly go. Gone to what? Boldly go. I don't know what that means. You mean. didn't watch the clips all week. No, I didn't. I've been <laughs> sick. Didn't you watch Star Trek? Boldly go where no man Oh, boldly go. Yeah. I well, understand. he had a friend that said, when are they going to boldly go? I know all his material. I've studied him all week. But um, so know that we're disappointed, but we are regrouping. So let me just let me just tell you a couple of things. Um, if you are in the Nashville area, I would like to say that Henry will be at the Grand Ole Opry tonight uh i can lead from that to april 23rd and 24th i'll be on the grand old opry in nashville and be working with the nashville people while i am there so you might want to make note if you are in in um, a drier area of nashville tonight and want to go to the grand old opry we like to start the show by giving away prizes every saturday and so what we have right here uh people who wrote in and asked Henry show questions or just said, I want to enter the contest. Now we throw everything away. Well, put them over to the side when a new month starts. So your odds of winning prizes are better at the beginning of the month. And we are at the beginning of the month. Somebody just said, was this an April Fool's, a late April Fool's Jay joke? No, it's not. <laughs> but this is going to be a great show because we are optimistic. And so I'm going to draw a name. Tony, you ready to ready. give a prize? You can have your choice of uh, my book, Don't Bungee Jump Naked, or the baseball cap, left brain. And this goes for the whole, we won't keep repeating this for the coming hour. You can get a baseball cap if you want it. You cannot get the audio version because we're going to give one of those away, but you can choose any of the nine CDs or DVDs when you win a prize. All you do is post to Tony Giver your snail mail address, and Tony is T-O-N-I at GenieRobertson.com. There is no I in Genie. So um, let me draw the first name for a regular prize right here today and the winner is elizabeth canuti k-n-u-t-t-i now listen elizabeth 
put this in on Thursday night. I did a pop-up Thursday and I had on a, a beautiful necklace that I'd gotten at a consignment shop or a flea market last week when I was in Savannah with Jane. And I didn't know the color. I called it purple. But you called it uh, Aubergine. You ever heard of that, Tony? A, it's spelled like Auburn for a while. A-U-B, and then it's E-R-G-I-N-E. -E. No, that? but I, not, well, I've heard the word. I wouldn't have known it was a shade purple of purple, stone. but apparently so. Okay, but anyway, Elizabeth, congratulations. You win the first prize of many today. <laughs> no telling how many things we'll give away today. So here's another, another prize, and this winner is, and it's everything but the audio you can choose from, Linda Hodgkins, anniversary blessings to Jeannie and Left Brain. Jeannie and Left Brain had one of our two anniversaries yesterday. The reason I always say two anniversaries, did you get that H-O-D-G-E? Oh, yeah. yeah. Linda, Linda made us those beautiful note cards, oh, I, remember. I think. Remember? I remember. Oh, I should have brought some up here. We've been scurrying the last hour. Um, but Linda, um, everybody else, we got married on Good Friday. So I always, as a young woman, would say, you owe me two anniversary gifts. But then he said one time, you owe me two anniversary meals. Are you cooking? And I just forgot that whole thing. So it, when we got married, it was April 12th, but it was Good Friday. So when she said that, she's saying about yesterday. And so that's two prizes that we've given away right now. And speaking of going way back, I have bad news for Wait, people Jean, around here. Before you tell your news, you do have a question this morning that said, how did you and, and Left Brain meet? So that will lead you into your first well, date. Well, <laughs> I was a lifeguard at the swimming pool in Graham where I grew up. And um, somebody came up named Bobby Boswell one day and said, I have somebody I want you to go out with. In other words, a blind date. He didn't say he's going with somebody else and she's going out of town next week and that might be a good time to try it. But he said, don't you play bridge? And I do play bridge. And he did too and left brain called me. He also said we will eat first and then go over to a couple's house that he knew to play bridge. I, I dressed up. I thought we were going to a restaurant. And I would say we did go to a restaurant of sorts. We went to Jim's Tasty Freeze and tell me, it's, it's I'm sorry to be the bearer of bad news. It's closed this week. It's it Jean. It's Jean Mann's fault. She put it on Facebook. So she was sad too. It was an April Fool's Day. No, it was April Fool's Day, but apparently not an April Fool's Day joke. So fifty-eight years later, or something like that. <laughs> oh my gosh, I can't believe that. We usually, if left brain weren't sick, we go down there and get. See, I ordered a hamburger excuse me, a cheeseburger, he ordered a hamburger, and that was my first clue because the cheeseburger was 10 cents more than the hamburger. And being cute, I said, you know how you are on the first date. Some of you have heard me tell this. I said, you don't like cheese? And he said, I love cheese. I just don't think percentage-wise it's worth 10 cents to add a piece of cheese. And I said, if you ask me out again, I'll bring, bring some cheese, and you can just save money because I knew – he was a little bit frugal. Darn, the Tasty Freeze is closed. I like for things to stay the same in my world. I like things <laughs> in order. I, will, I know. I, I sound almost left brain, but that's you, not going to be. So I, I just want to make a comment. Question. We have finally gotten a comment that we've never had before. That my mic's too loud. Tony's <laughs> mic is too loud. I've just turned it down, so let me know if it's okay. Oh, oh, I was going to say I could hold <laughs> it farther it, they're away. Always, they're not loud enough. Can you hear me? Oh, you're Can fine. You hear me? Okay. So here's what we're going to do today. I have all these questions. This many questions were sent in for Henry Cho. And I, I mean, how many, how many of you are going to be answering questions such as why did your parents come from to the United States from Korea? And why did they settle in Knoxville, Tennessee? There's not too many people that I could draw some of these questions out. And how have you had a successful year? I mean, uh, such a career in speed. So why don't, if you have a, spe a question right now, you can type it into your computer and it might be about, we're going to dwell on my career today because y'all always have a lot of questions like that. Actually, with with the situation, this we will deal about anything you want to talk about tonight. So just put up the question. Patrick, you watching one screen, Tony's watching the other. And then I have, 
books of ideas of material that I'm working on. And some of them, I'm just going to ask y'all if you think I could ever tell that on a stage. What you got, Patrick? You you look like you have something to say. Oh no, Henry emailed. He said he's he's so he's apologizing. He's still under the house, okay. um, <laughs> and and have to reschedule. So tell him, um, tell him we're going on without him. <laughs> okay, uh, uh, yeah. We'll save the questions. We'll just save the questions. They're not going anywhere. Okay, Pat, Tony, do you have a question? Uh, no. Okay, now at the end of every week, you always come to me with a report that tells me how many people watch the show, Patrick. Okay, so I'm asking the people that are watching the show to send questions. Mm -hmm. And y'all, neither there are no questions yet? Oh, I see what you're saying. I'm sorry. Um, let me find a if not, oh, here's go lots of questions. Uh, what was your first teaching job? Oh, my, my physical education degree <clears> got me my first teaching job. I was uh, right after I graduated, I got a job first in the library, right, Tony? At the Auburn right. Library for the summer because I had to have money. And then I got a job in the physical education department at Auburn. I later taught junior high, high school, and then another college, Judson College on the collegiate. And I loved teaching. And y'all, I was good at it, but I was young. And I threw my heart into it. If I were teaching now, I'd probably be in jail within six months. <laughs> I don't know yeah. what I would do. <laughs> Pull up your pants, do this, yeah. do that. But I loved, I absolutely loved teaching. And then Left Brain and I looked at it one year and said, you just spoke at 12 events this month. A month, 12 events. Drove to them. Almost fell asleep the next day. I wasn't being fair to teaching. I was coaching. I was taking everybody else's children uh, to whatever they were competing in. And then left brain was taking uh, Beaver, our son Beaver, to those things. And so something had to give. Uh, to do 12 speeches, man, I was driving all night to come back and speak. And I was gone too many weekends. So we said, why don't we stop the teaching? Jerry, actually. Excuse me, Jerry, who I call left brain, is the one who said, why don't you just give it a shot at going full time? And that's what I did. Somebody okay. just asked, what was your most embarrassing moment on stage? Oh, my gosh. Pick one. Just pick one. <laughs> well, well, you, you asked me that last spring, somebody, and I, and I selected one. I hadn't thought about it. And then on the radio yesterday with Neil Steele, I'm on his show on Fridays, uh, I don't know how this all came up, but we did. Uh, what my normal thing that I do without COVID is, I go out into the lobby, and when they open the doors to the theater and people are coming in, then I'm sitting there like welcoming them to a wedding or something. Practically, hello, thank you for coming. It also sounds like a funeral. Either way, hello, thank y'all for coming, taking pictures and doing all that. Then I go back to the dressing room and change into a dressier outfit and wait until it's my turn and they'll introduce me. And that's usually about 25 minutes after I go backstage. So I wear, because I'm in the rocking chair now, uh, because of, of breaking my knee, uh, excuse me, I said my knee, I didn't break it, I had the knee replaced on the femur when I broke the femur. I'm still sitting in a rocking chair on stage and so I've, I wear slacks, beautiful slacks outfits that Jane Tucker from New York City has helped me put together. But I wear knee highs. Now, Irma Bombeck said that if you really want to, really want to encouragement to lose weight, put on a swimsuit and knee highs in January and stand in front of a mirror naked, except for those two things. And I can tell you that's the truth. And every woman watching this today knows when you wear knee highs, they can cut into your legs. So when I go back into the dressing room, I have a habit of pushing my knee highs down so that they roll up around my ankles. Like you saw your grandmother do, but, but they didn't have knee highs, did they? Just whatever they were wearing, their stockings, they would roll them up or down around their knees. And so I was on stage right in front of the audience there, just a few feet because I like to get up near the people. And an older gentleman, and I'm 77, so you can imagine if I'm saying older, started with his finger just jabbing, pointing down at my legs. And it was one of those things that happened when you're speaking 
and then you you look another way and you talk over here and you talk over here, but you're very aware of what this person is still doing. And when you look back, he starts going further. And he was trying to point out to me that around both of my ankles, and when you cross your leg in a chair, there are these rolled up knee highs. <laughs> then on stage, I finally stopped and I said, what are you doing? And he said, and I looked and the knee highs were all the way down. So I brought them, I rolled, had, then I had to on stage roll them up. And it was hilarious. It absolutely, everything like that that happens is funny to me. And it's a piece of material. I come home then, anything that happens, I have a journal that I keep. And I start just putting the ideas down in books. And then when I have a chance, whether I'm on an airplane or home or what, I start working on stories. The next step would be to try that story out on Tony or Patrick or anybody else. And Tony, you'll tell me, you'll say, I don't know. Or you'll say, they're going to love that. And Patrick says, I got a better punchline. And then he gives <laughs> me a punchline. So that's the way we work around here. And it works very well. So the knee highs down by my ankles were good. I think last spring when I talked to y'all and somebody asked that, um, I was being funny and had a brand new curtain in Thomasville, North Carolina. And I was emceeing the Miss Thomasville pageant. And they were so proud of their curtain. They were, as we say in the South, they were right proud of that curtain. And so I said something about thank you. And I thought they would pull the curtain and they didn't. And I said, thank you again. And I sort of looked over at the curtain man and he's staring. So I walked over, got the edge of the curtain and jerked it to pull it in close and pull the whole brand new curtain off of the whatever it is that was attached to at the top. It got to the center of the stage and would not move. It would not go left. It would not go right. And we still had to do the pageant, including the talent, which they then had to change and put in front. That was a little bit embarrassing. <laughs> I have a picture of it from their newspaper. I would say that was embarrassing. By the way, I just used a Southern phrase. I said it was, it was right. They were right proud. Did you, did you hear me say they were right proud? Did you think anything about that, Tony? No, I don't, but I know that a lot of people who do. aren't from the South do. Yeah, I don't, I don't think, because you and I have not just met. Uh -uh, but it was right there. <laughs> no, but I got to show you this. So somebody, and I am so sorry that I can't remember your name, wrote me and said, why do Southerners insert the word right? R-I-G-H-T into our vocabulary. And I said, I don't, I don't know what she's talking about. Do you remember who it was? Uh, no. um, I believe uh, Margaret, oh, hi, what was her name? The lady who, hi, oh, the, who the edited the, my who book, book so well. I, she may have been the one who asked, because you use that phrase in the book, and, and she, she thought she wanted out. to correct it because she didn't think you meant to say that. But and you and you were right saying, to me. I think you were saying the boy, you owed the the gray and writer write, write much, much money, money. Mm -hmm. and she said you don't need the word right okay. i'm so glad that people feel comfortable enough to correct you I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh we love me. in this <laughs> business you get Ooh. corrected so this is a book i'm on page 584 that in the front y'all are gonna love this norma rose is under the weather or we would have called her fast and said please come over here and help us with this show she's on and, the men though huh she is on the she's men don't be fine she does not have covid uh, so this is it. And the, she gave me this book. It's a big, thick, heavy book. It's one of a series. And this is called North Carolina Folklore, Volume 1. And this is all the things about North Carolina. And they have phrases that we use. So I started thinking about it when, uh, I guess it was Margaret. If not she, then I apologize to the person who wrote. I thought, wait a minute, we do say, you know, how much you selling? What do you want for that car? And they give the high figure and you'll say, well, he's right proud of that car. Or that's right much money. Why do we do that? You do. I it, don't Sarah. know why. <laughs> I don't know why. Well, I do. I've oh, done oh, some you, research. Now you know why. Okay. I've held this for you're about going four to, weeks. You're going to educate us. I'm going to educate you because I've held this for about four weeks thinking I didn't want to drag this book to say, you know, any, <laughs> to Tallahassee or to on page 584. North Carolina folklore, the word wor right. Okay. This is a word that's very oh. common in early English, used by all you Southerners. Perk up. Be proud. Shakespeare. 
that goes going back a long way. But somebody else, somebody was wounded with a spear, right sharply spear. And if you keep going over here, right smart, it's a good deal. It's a right, it's a right smart deal. It's a right good deal. And it goes on and on and gives organ, and it says used in the South. And then it says particularly North Carolina. Carolina okay. So are we the and, only ones? That and, are Mar that? and Margaret is on, and she said, yes, it was. It she was, was she? the one who. who, who Did picked, you hear that, yeah. Margaret? It was yeah. she. It was. Her. <laughs> it was she who said sent that in. But according to this learned book that Norma Rose gave to me in 1992, here's an example. It's a good deal. He has a right. He's got right smart money. He's got a lot of money. It's a right smart distance to White Plains or somebody like, around here. We'd be saying it's a right smart distance over to Cullowee. <laughs> so I just thought I'd make we Southerners. We try to teach a Southern phrase here every so often just to help the rest of the world. And you know who is hilarious with Southern phrases is Henry Cho. You got any word? Is he still under the house? I think he's still. I'm, I'm picturing him with like these uh, Wicked Witch of the West shoes up underneath that house. <laughs> <laughs> no, but actually he's doing some good work under there. You know what? I'm sure he's helping people that need it. And the whole church is turned out apparently and he's in charge. But the catch on it is if somebody's tuning in right now, they're saying she's talking too much. Henry chose there. She ought to yeah. come on. Like well, it's, don't, <laughs> don't worry. Your fans will keep them straight. Okay, good. All well, right. well, let me just mention one thing. You mentioned that um, it, it's Shakespearean, right? Proud. Well, and Gene Black may be able to comment on this. You know, for years in Alabama, we had the Alabama Shakespeare Festival yeah. in Among Montgomery. Yeah. And they wanted to build. I used, we used to take field trips there as kids. And they wanted to build it as an exact replica of the Stratford on Avon theater in England. And so they had the, the, the architects and, the, and the, from the, from the building to the grounds, to the swans, they wanted the exact same swans, the same breeder. And so they called them, they said, where do you get your swans? And they said, we had, there's a small farm in Notasolga, Alabama Notasolga. that we get them from, which is probably about 30 minutes from Montgomery. <laughs> It's also uh, about two minutes from Auburn. That's right. Notice Saga is on the outside of Auburn. Yeah. I declare. So they, that's where they got the swan. Apparently, that's where they got it. I'm not back in the day. But. Well, Gene Black had also written in because he's got relatives in Arab, Alabama. And um, uh, Henry Cho's wife is from Arab, Alabama. Mm -hmm. And he speaks with, by the way, a he he speaks with a southern accent because although his parents were from Korea, he was born in Knoxville, Tennessee, and has lived there most of his life. And of course, now is a full time traveling music. Um, comedian. He makes me sound like I'm from New Jersey. No, <laughs> no, you got to say New Jersey. New Jersey makes me sound like I come from New. All right, now I've got some more things here um, to try out on the group. If you don't have a question, Tony, nobody's asking questions. Oh, lots of questions. They're going so fast, I can't keep up. Okay, how about you, Patrick? Uh, and someone thought Patrick looked right handsome today. Right, <laughs> well, uh, right, right handsome. How much weight have you lost, Patrick? I have lost almost 40 pounds. Now it's time to quit. Now it's time to start eating ribs. Let's start eating. Eat. Well, you can, I will give you when, we lit, when the show is over, if you want it, I will give you big, huge, strawberries covered in chocolate well, oh and where did they come from it, yesterday in the middle of the show well, on the radio somebody started tapping they had been trying to get in the front they started tapping on the door behind me y'all have seen the door when i do the pop-ups it's behind me and it was a young woman with a mask on uh and she had a huge box of strawberries covered in chocolate neil immediately said i sent them <laughs> <laughs> they came from sherry harris and Isley, her godchild, who is a student at Elon, and Isley's going to lunch with us tomorrow. So did y'all get a reservation? Someone did want to know if you were cooking Easter lunch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, if you want a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Jeannie made excellent. Re Jeannie made excellent reservations. Uh, yes. Uh, although I, I like this, Gene Wiley. Gene says, "Can I put ribs and French fries on a charcuterie board?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
I but hope so, because that's what? what we're having but for dinner tonight. Knows. All you got to do is make it a charcuterie board. Is just throw some grapes on there. Anything you have, put a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Just throw some grapes. Throw some You've grapes. got a charcuterie board. Somebody has suggested that we get a whole table full of flowers. Flowers like that grow pretty, not that we built make a cake with fresh flowers. Accent is bad, huh? Like fresh flowers, fresh flowers, like from a and flower bring shop. Back the same five people we had here with the charcuterie board get some instructions no, on how no. to make an arrangement and let y'all go to town. Why are you shaking your head, Tony? Because I'm worse with flowers than I am with food. Oh, okay, I got it. <laughs> all right, all right. Nobody else. Has, neither of you has a good question. I will pursue this right here. So I'm looking at some different. I try out material, and sometimes people will say, Jeannie, you cannot, you can't tell that. You can't, it's not dirty, it's not all color. It just, they just say, it, you can't do that. Patrick, your daddy used to tell stories using the word armpit. And I kept saying, you can't, you do, you, you can't keep using it. And then he'll say, well, you're using this. That's a telephone. <laughs> And it's yours. <laughs> I, th I thought I, I thought I was in trouble for a second. <laughs> okay. Hello. Hey, hey. Yeah, I'm in the show. We're in the show right now. I just told about it. I'm picking you up tomorrow at twenty till twelve. Is that okay? Thank you for the strawberries. And We're chocolate. eating, but but I own the show. What? Pick her up at twenty till one. We're eating at one. Oh, twenty till one. 20, but I'm on the show right now because the person is not here who was coming. <laughs> so let me get off and fill in. Is it an emergency? Okay. No problems. I'll talk to you later. Bye bye. Okay. What should every speaker do before they start something? Try turning off your phone. Turn off your cell phone. I'm sorry, but. You know, well, that I, I'm assuming that was Isley. She's she's always worth answering. Yes, we love always, Isley. Guarantee she comes down and come and help. So, what my what I do is I didn't know this was even. I thought I was in trouble for a second. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I had it up hoping to hear from Henry. I guess he's still under the house. It doesn't matter. So, what I do is I try out piece, I get the ideas off my journals. And then I, you asked me this in last week in Savannah, what's the process for putting a story into a program? Sometimes it's a gift from God. It's like heaven opens up and he says, here, Jeannie, this is perfect. And you can tell it most of the time it's not that way. For example, if you've heard um, A Mother's Revenge, when I say in there that I waited 29 years until I got the punchline, I don't say it like that. But the punchline, I'll say, 29 years later, 29 years. Uh, I wouldn't want to wait 29 years for punchlines to every story. But a lot of times you have a story <laughs> that's going to, it, it just doesn't happen. And you ask people to help you. And so I have a list of things here that I thought I would try. And you know what's bad about this? I hear no response because y'all are. This is not a two-way street. Nobody's <laughs> zooming in. So let me tell which one of these that I might try. Um, I, we I actually had a question okay. first that said, how do you get your punchline? And I didn't make that up, which is what you're going to talk about. Well, so. y'all want – this is my hobby. I'm very lucky. You've asked me so many times, do you collect anything other than beavers? Do you have any hobbies? I haven't even shown you the clowns or the – China or all the stuff I collect. <laughs> However, my hobby is writing stories. And this right here, I just ran downstairs when we got the word from Henry and started just absolutely pulling out tablets that I keep with me. I don't, I don't put it all in the computer and looking at them to work on stories. So I thought maybe I could run a few of these by y'all. And I already know that on some of them you're going to say, no, I don't know that. Let me give you an example. How many years ago did we have the bed bugs? Oh, um, 10, mm, maybe. Oh, it's the worst thing. If you've had bed bugs, <laughs> y'all, it's the worst thing. You can't get rid of them. You cannot get rid of them by yourself. You've got to call in the professionals. And I, the story just got worse and worse. And be, I left brain that said they come out at three in the morning 
and they're on your they're near where you are because they're like mosquitoes and they suck your blood and all this kind of stuff we were eating alive but of course i wasn't eating like he was because i would fly away and then and the other of course is i probably brought them home out of any hotel room that i have been in because you can be from the ritz hotel to the two 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 hotel whatever the name is and you can get bed bugs. So I worked on a lot of material and I was speaking to the Dallas uh, chapter of the National Speakers Association. And I this was just happening. And of course, we had to fumigate and get hazmat in here and everything. It was awful. And Jerry was eaten up, just beaten up. And I told him the whole story and, and I, I tried it twice, but this was just around the table with about 20 other speakers. And the looks on their faces, and I said, I can't tell that, can they? And they said, you scared us. I don't want to go to a hotel. And then I was working for Dan Maddox down in, and I was. Oh, uh, the pay for, uh, American Payroll yes. Association, and San I, Antonio. I yeah. told Patricia Fripp, I said, listen to this new story about we, we've had an ordeal with these bed bugs and told her, and she said, I think because she's British, this is my invitation. I think <laughs> not real good, but it is a mistake to do this. These people are staying in this hotel, and this meeting planner got their rooms and did all this. And I just it just hadn't hadn't worked. So I don't mind hearing if you. And here's one that this will be interesting to see what y'all say. Um, well, first I'll tell you one that I think will work. I've tried it sparingly. But I tell the baton story. And if you haven't seen it, it's the longest story. I think it's 17 minutes. I think if you put the entire, this is how much we go into stories. If you put the entire rafting trip together, it's four, 24 minutes. But the baton story, we didn't even put it up on YouTube for a long time because we were told, oh, you can't, nobody will watch that. Well, y'all have watched it and you've loved it. But it's about a baton twirler. So I had a speech in Atlanta. And most of the people there were men. Uh, that particular area of work is infiltrated with women now as it should be. But at that point, most of them were men. And so afterwards, they were gathering around to tell me that they liked the speech or, the, or to tell me otherwise. And there was a woman standing there dressed to the hilt. She looked like such a professional businesswoman. But every time I would turn to talk to her, she said, I'll just wait. I'll just wait. And yeah. Finally, the last man walked away, and y'all would have just loved it. I said, are you ready now? And she said, oh, Jeannie, I've been waiting to tell you. She's almost changed personalities. She said, I'm going home, and I'm going to call my mama right now and tell her I could be giving speeches, and I could have been in the Miss America pageant, using my term, if you had let me be in the marching band as a majorette. And I said, what? She said, I twirled the baton when I was growing up in my neighborhood. And I could just tell she was so, she said, I was the best baton twirler in the neighborhood and everybody knew it. And when the ninth grade rolled around, I told my mama I was going to be in front of that band as a majorette doing this. And I knew I could make it. And my mama said, no daughter of mine is going to be on the football field flipping up her skirt and showing her behind at every football game. You'll be in the marching band. You play the flute and you play it well. The woman then said it became a mother-daughter thing. We battled all summer. And when the tryouts came out, Mama won. I played the flute in the marching band. And I did so for four years and i want her to know if she had let me twirl i could maybe be a professional speaker <laughs> and i said well i appreciate you telling me that people tell me things that i love it and then she said but i wanted you to know and that's why i have waited so long i never marched off that field a single friday night that i didn't find my mama in the stands and twirled that flute right in her direction <laughs> now y'all chuckled that we don't have any idea if anybody listening <laughs> in <laughs> chuckled on that. No, no, they're chuckling. No. And then and then I, I I was telling somebody about it and they said, Did she try to toss it like a baton? And I said, No, but if she had have tried to do that, 
remember it goes straight up, but the band keeps marching and it would have come down and hit the, you know, the tuba player in the head. I mean, the story began to grow. That's the way they do. Mm -hmm. So do, could somebody put on TV if they think that's worth? I mean, okay. oh, a lot of people. Is, are they'll make comments. Is it worth working on? Yes. That's all I want to know. Yeah. Is it worth okay. working on? Uh, quick, couple of other <laughs> questions. Okay, and then I want to tell Burma David. Carol said, "I laughed so hard I woke oh, the cat." Okay. <laughs> okay. So why don't you? That, I, okay. See, vindication. That's what I. That's the next thing I have on my journal. Tried in conversation. So okay. I don't want to sit be invited to dinner and then sit there with everybody and try to tell story after story after story. But if I can work something in, in conversation uh, and get a reaction, then I can take it. It gets to go from list to list. And y'all so speaking I, of your list. Okay. Someone wants to know, why don't you just record your thoughts into your cell phone and then you wouldn't have to carry a tablet around. Well, I can sort of answer that why? one. Well, one, you need to know where your cell phone is all the time. <laughs> Two, having it charged would be good. Three, being able to find you know, you what, you in, <laughs> what you put in. <laughs> but and and Jeannie loves her tablets. <laughs> I, I this is one of about thirty down there, and I can show them all to you today. It's just one idea after the other, and when I put the ideas down. Sometimes I skip several lines because I know if I'll come back and look through it and want to add to it, I need space to add it to there. All right, now let me tell you one that you might not get a good approval of. What is it, Tony? No, no. I was going to say, the, I think you should go on with Bur uh, that story. Okay. Yeah. Um, I was, people do come up after, after um, the speeches and tell you things. And sometimes you, you just don't know what they're going to say. And, and I don't know. It, most of the time they will tell you something funny and I listen because then they'll say, you can tell that if you want to. And if I say, well, what's your name? I would give you credit. And if they say, oh, no, 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 don't. It's probably not. It's probably not a true story. They're floating around. And so I check. But this one happened at the um, you've heard of uh, Southern Lady Magazine. Southern Lady Magazine is out of Birmingham. It's put out by Phyllis. Hoffman D Piano and uh, it's put on it's a great magazine. Hoffman Media, I think, has about that's right. 10, that's right. Ten different magazines. They, they do a taste lot of the same. I'm not sure what I'll taste, but they used to do a lot with teas, T E A like yes, teas. Let me digress. Taste of the South, my good friends. But uh, they wrote I gave them the recipe with the pound cake to use in an article, which they did. And then they called and said, could I do a monthly feature on uh, recipes? <laughs> and y'all, what would I do the second month? I mean, that was it. Past my green bean casserole that people don't let me make. But anyway, so I was at a Southern Lady Magazine conference. I, I brag because one of my things I'm proud of is I write a lot of material and I had spoken there eight years in a row and I had not repeated a story and I take a lot of pride in that. So the same as in the night with the woman, the very few, this was all women, but there was a woman close to my age, very coiffured. Was that a word, Tony? Coiffured. 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 She had her hair fixed. She had her hair fixed and she's standing with a younger daughter and she was made up this the mother was just beautiful. And she stepped up and she said, and it's with her permission. I've written her. I know she wondered what happened. I said, can I tell this story about you? And she said, Oh yes, yes, that would be fine. And, um, but it just, well, you'll see what I mean. So her name, she stepped right up and she said, my name is Burma Davis Posey. I was Miss Georgia in 19, something like 65, 66. I hope it's not much later than that, Bozy. Mosey. <laughs> Burma. <laughs> the only time I'd heard somebody with the name Burma was when we would drive to Tennessee and they had Lookout Mountain ahead and then they had signs, Burma Shave. Mm -hmm. Remember all along the road? <laughs> oh, I remember. You're I, too young, Patrick. Since I grew up in Chattanooga, so yes, so I remember Burma, Burma Shave signs. So this yes. woman said, my name is Burma Davis Posey, and this is my daughter, and we just loved your speech, and I wanted her to meet you. I feel like I know you because we were both in the Miss America pageant. She she was Southern and co-fured and uh, coiffured, 
and all that, but she spoke very good grammar. She didn't say the Miss America pageant. She said that. And I said, oh, when? And she told me, and I said, well, I was ahead of you a little bit. Not too much, but I was ahead. And then I asked a question that people ask each other. If somebody comes up to me and says, I was in the Miss America pageant one time too, or I was in the Miss North Carolina pageant, the next question that people always ask is, what is it? 1968, and uh, Carmen Bishop Pipkin is a friend of Burma's. Oh, well, I, I wish Burma were listening. Sometimes she does. <clears throat> Excuse me, 68. Y'all, just a minute. <coughs> what is this? I don't know, but while you're drinking, so, several have suggested that Ryder and, and Gray will be selling those tablets when your when your ship comes in. When ship. <laughs> Their ship God, comes in. That's coffee. Okay. They, they're, I just love them and I just won't, won't tap it. So she was, I said to her the question that everybody who's ever been in a pageant says, because we have so much in common. And I said, how'd you do? And the word, how'd you do means, did you get into the top 10 and thereby get on national television? I mean, it's, a, it's not a, dictated code but i've just noted through the years people always say how'd you do and she said well i didn't get in the i didn't get in the top 10 uh i was i think she said i was most talented i sang opera i was most talented non finalist one night or something like that or i got a talent award but that and she said as a matter of fact Jeannie, she said it ticked me off I w it was like I was in the top 10, but I really wasn't. And I said, well, you didn't get in it. You didn't get in it, Burma. She said, no, I wasn't in the top 10, but I really was. And let me explain why. I roomed with Miss Florida and she did the Charleston and she got in the top 10. Now, here I am, a trained opera singer. And, I, and they recognized that. And I didn't get in the top 10 I just couldn't believe it. And she got in doing the Charleston, but it was okay because we were roommates and we were friends and it was like I was a part of her talent. Well, I had never heard of another contestant having one of the contestants as your talent. If she said I sang and my um, accompanist didn't show up, Maybe I could understand this is a pianist and she can come and play. But I said, how are you part of, of her talent? And she said, well, she did the Charleston and take a lesson in this. If you're younger and you want to be in something like this, she said, but she didn't just do the Charleston. She, I mean, she practically made it up. She did the same step over and over <laughs> and over again, but she did the Charleston. She put on, she sold the Charleston. And I said, how did one do that? And she said she had a huge wad of bubble gum in her mouth. And in perfect timing, and I remembered seeing this because what she did was I was watching it. I was two or three years afterward. She would pull the bubble gum out and do it like this right on key and push it back in her mouth. And then she started blowing bubbles and the bubble popped in time with the music. I was thinking to myself, if I had thought of this, I could have done this. I was earlier. I could have gotten away with this. For example, the bubble would get to here and the piece of Charleston music would have some, you know, some noise in it or something. And the bubble would pop. And all of a sudden, toward the end of the song, you realize she wasn't pulling that bubble gum back in her face. The bubble got bigger and bigger and the suspense of it the bubble was suddenly bigger than her head which you can see attracted attention the whole audience was just mesmerized and on the exact last note of the charleston the bubble popped the lights went out and she ran off stage well we knew we were laughing so hard everybody connected with the pageant you wondered if she could do it that way over and over, and she could. And so I talked to her since we were roommates, and I said, I think you're going to get in the top 10. And she did. And, and I said, I, I can't. she got in the top 10 doing the same step over and over and blowing the bubble bigger than her head. She said, 
if you had seen it, Jeannie, and I swanny, I think I almost did. And in getting material to see if I could work this into a story, I looked her up. And it said that everywhere she went that year as Miss Florida, they gave her bowls of bubble gum. And I mean, just bowl, I showed her picture and she's getting the bowls of the bubble gum. And I said, that's fantastic. But I don't see how that involves you. She said, oh, well, I was very important. When they announced the top 10, the other of us got out of the way and they were allowed to run to a nearby dressing room as fast as possible and change from their evening gowns into their talent outfit, whatever it might be. And they allowed me, if she got in the top 10, to stand by the door. And I warmed up the gum. <laughs> she, said, she said, I chewed it and chewed it as fast as I could. And then when she came running out, I gave it to her and she put it in her mouth and she was ready to go. If I hadn't warmed up the gum, the bubble wouldn't ever stretch. And this would have been on national television above her head. And I said, I can't believe that you did that. She said, it's just a good thing she didn't become Miss America. I would have had my jaws by the end of the year if I'd had to travel with her would be this big. Now, now let's be honest. Y'all be honest with me. Can I work on that story and tell it or not? And the not is because is some it people too have said, yucky. ooh, you put the gum from here to there. And, oh, oh, that's terrible. And, but I think it's hilarious. So what do y'all think? Well, you know, what I, you know what I think. What do you but think, Pat? Of course you can use anybody who have gets upset about that. Hey, I've never told you that story, had I? Mm -mm, that's funny. How about you, Tony? You've heard me. Oh, I, I, I like it. Someone said it wouldn't work with COVID. Well, of course not. You can't blow bubbles wearing a mask. <laughs> but 68. Hard to blow bubbles with a mask. You can't blow a bubble wearing a mask. But 68, yeah, you, this does not work with COVID, y'all. If You can't have all those details worked out. So yes or no? Now, is anybody going to say, no, you grossed me out with the uh, putting the here, warming up the gum and giving it So far, it's, it's yes. Well, if it was just a random person um, warming up the gum, but since it was one of her good friends, <laughs> that's different. They were yeah. rooming together. Yeah. Completely. Yeah. Someone says, no, no, you chewed it first. It's gross. So well, of course it's gross. Said that. That's why it's funny. Yeah. Well, how many are saying no? Not too many. Not too many. I, uh, I, I, I'm, me I'm blocking those folks. Okay. Yeah. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, you don't. I could, okay. It, it's the same as when I did it. I've tried it with friends before, and, and some people just immediately go, oh, that's horrible. That's horrible, but. Some others think that they could see that happening, and it did happen. So I called Burma Davis Posey and asked her if I could tell this, and it must have been three or four years ago. And she said, yes, and I never have because I don't. It'll be gross. No. That's okay. okay. I'll tell it. What? I'll tell it. Yo, Patrick will <laughs> take the story and tell it. Oh, Patrick, um, can you turn the camera? Can they see that, that divan right there? The Molly Maids came this week. And when the Molly Maids come, then when they leave, if you have a sofa or something, <laughs> they have scraped something across it. Can you see it's how called a it's vacuum? Too? It's called a vacuum, Jeannie. It, it leaves marks when you vacuum. It's gorgeous. So, <laughs> it's, so, it's just so like what I want you to tell is a story that I'm chastising you about. I want you to work on this because it's true and tell them about since somebody brought up, <clears throat> brought up COVID. Well, so when a year ago, when, when we went on lockdown um, and I saw a year of, of work disappear, like all speakers did, I started panicking. So I started look, going, making a list of all of my recurring monthly bills and seeing what can I get rid of. And so one of the best things I ever did for my marriage was to get, Molly maids. We have housekeepers come every two weeks and that way we don't have to spend our weekends cleaning bathrooms and scrubbing toilets. And when I say we, I mean my wife, Leslie. And so every couple of weeks they would come and it just made our world a lot easier. Well, when the COVID hit, I thought I, I can't afford it. Um, and so, but I couldn't tell Leslie that I was going to get rid of the Molly maids. And so I decided 
I have a solution. And so um, I went out and I bought a bunch of cleaning materials. I bought a bunch of um, toilet scrubbers and rubber gloves and, and Lysol. But I didn't want Leslie to know that I was doing this. And so I snuck it back in under my coat and I hid it around the house. So when she went to work on Monday, I started cleaning and I started scrubbing toilets and mopping did floors. Get, did you let the Molly maids go? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I told them. I'm sorry. Um, I told them, don't come. And so, um, and so I, I let them go, didn't tell Leslie, and I started scrubbing. And so what took them about an hour took me four and a half hours. And so Leslie got home from work that evening, and she went, Molly maids have been here. I said, yes, they have. And then I hear from the kitchen, um, well, it looks like they missed a little bit over here by the refrigerator. And I thought, okay. And I said, well, I'll, I'll have a talk with them. A couple weeks later, Leslie went to work. I pulled out the rubber gloves and I started cleaning. And she got home and she said, you know, the Molly maids didn't clean behind the toilet. And I said, wow. And so next week or a couple weeks later, um, she came home. She goes, Patrick, the Molly maids are doing a terrible job. They didn't even clean the microwave. And I thought, microwave. And she goes, you know, we need to just let them go. I said, I'm already one step ahead of you. <laughs> so, so I think that's a story that you should tell well, and tell it fast as you can. Of course, if we get a lot of speeches, we would have it. What time is it? We need to give away more. I want you to say, by the way. Ten minutes. Oh, will you oh. switch and sing just because you just told that story? Um, nothing cleans up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Can you oh. switch songs that quickly? What have you got oh, over Well, there? while he's getting ready, I had written Pat. A man or a man, Pat, I'm sorry, I don't know how to pronounce your last name, who wrote us yesterday, and this is her email. Okay. Uh, we get a lot of wonderful emails from all of you, and I try to answer everyone or write you back. Jeannie sees them all. Jeannie, Jeannie doesn't answer everything, I'll, but, but she does see everything. Uh, Pat, uh, Pat wrote me yesterday and said, is Miss Jeannie not on today? We could not find her here on Facebook back porch. Uh, Pat thought yesterday was Saturday. <laughs> so, of course, I, and I can understand, but when I, she wrote back, when I wrote her and told her it was Friday and that we look forward today, the next day, she wrote and said that her husband was home from work that day and he wasn't usually home on Friday. I understand that when mine retired, I've not known what day it was since, and that's been at least 10 years now. Um uh, of course, some of us don't get to retire, but anyway, uh, people want to see your earrings up close. I don't know if Pat can do that or not, Pat Patrick, but later afterwards, okay. if you can show them, apparently they, I can't see them from here, but I think they must be pretty. Well, they're pretty because they are Pauline Trezier earrings. Oh. And uh, Jane's mother-in-law, Jane Tucker from New York City, uh, his mother-in-law was a lady named Pauline Trezier. The best picture I have of her, she came from France on the boat. I mean, they barely got out for the war, and she got to New York, and that's where she stayed. And she's in the, um, you know, the Hall of Fame for the um, all the people. In what word am I looking for, Tony? Uh, the what they were. Oh what? gosh, I'm forgetting words. No, I'm forgetting words. Yeah. The the fashion industry the there's a garment district She's right, on right, the Hollywood. right she, she always a, had a long cigarette lighter and glasses and this kind of thing and she designed jewelry and clothes and just china everything and so jane gave me a pair of these because they're clip-ons and they're soft they they're made up of these little rhinestones but they're very soft and so when i was getting ready to tape number nine Remember you said, and we both said the last right. one we will ever. Yes, do. yes. But number, number the ninth nine DVD, DVD mm -hmm. the one over here. Let me make sure what do I have on in this picture. Different ones, but the, on the tape, uh, Jane said, "I think you should wear. Why don't you wear those Pauline Treasure earrings I gave you?" And um, and then we were in Savannah, and I said, "I can't because we taped two nights, and I don't have a spare." And if you have a, don't have a spare and you break an earring or step on it in the dressing room or whatever, then your second night won't have the same earrings and it messes it all up for editing. She just got up, went to her bedroom and came back and said, oh, here, 
slap down another pair just like it. She said, you don't think I would have given you that pair if I didn't have another pair. <laughs> and so that's what those earrings are. All right, I'm not sure. I want to tell people okay. how to pronounce her name or spell her name in case they would like to look up Pauline. Okay, that'd be great. It's Pauline, T-R-I-G-E-R-E, -E, and you will find um, a lot about her. She was quite she's, a, she's, she's passed away else. and she, uh, but came she from lived a, a, they came over from Normandy and uh, and um, got she on was boat. no no they, um, didn't go, they came from France on a ship she, called the Normandy. She was born in 1908 and she passed away in 2002, right after 9/11. Right, yeah, no, February the 13th. So uh, less than a year was, after. She was six something months. else, and a lot of the artwork in Jane's house was Pauline. Right, and they right. preserved. But um, you okay. told me you told me about that lady, the Pat coming in. You mm -hmm. said her own right. husband came in on Friday right. and said, "Right, or right. yeah, turn on Jeannie. yeah, time to turn on Jeannie." Well, they're watching today. They okay. they got the right day. Yeah, I said it wasn't just me Pat. So much material, it's wonderful. I know, I, I know. All right, right Pat, go sing. You sing the song. I ask you to switch and sing. Sure. It. Okay, because you just told about cleaning the house. That's right. Well, I um. You know, it's been so long since I've done some of these songs. Um, I used to do them every week. Yeah, somewhere. Um, so uh, I always introduce this song by saying that I'm, uh, I've not always been as lucky in love as I am right now. There was a time when I was a single man living the life of a single musician in Nashville, Tennessee. I've had my share of relationships, some good, some bad, some train wrecks. This is a song I wrote about a train wreck. I like to call her Becky. Now, Becky's not a bad person. She just had a habit I couldn't get used to. She was too affectionate in public with other dudes. So my philosophy is if you do me wrong, I'm going to write a song about it and spread it all over the country. <laughs> her faded sweater's all she left behind. Fading scent reminding me of happier times. She's run off with someone new. Now this sweater's all I've got to see me through. Whoa, nothing cleans a toilet like cashmere. Nothing scrubs the bowl like what I've got. <clears throat> I'm trying hard to wipe away her memory while I scrub those pesky stains off of my pot. Well, looky here, in my truck, she left a toothbrush. Well, I should send it to her new address. Now that's the Christian thing to do. But hey, my dog needs clean teeth too. Let her new boyfriend worry about her breath. Whoa, nothing cleans a toilet like cashmere. Yay, Pat. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just asked you to switch oh, the song no, you had planned and sing that. So I'm going to give away some prizes. Yeah, we need to do okay. that. Okay. Also, real quickly, uh, Linda Harris wrote and asked, what's your favorite jelly? And because of peanut butter and jelly day. And I know you won't mention that we enjoyed okay. seeing Linda. Linda Harris is from Oklahoma. And uh, she and her sister-in-law, Brenda, I believe, drove from Oklahoma to Newberry, South Carolina last fall and went to three shows in a row. I couldn't believe it. They had tickets. There, to there was a fourth, but they there got a fourth. But they, they, they said, figured they'd heard everything. No, they were, wanted to go to Charlotte and go tour the Billy Graham Museum, which is a, a great thing in Charlotte. Anyway, so we, Linda came here. Somebody in the family had passed nearby and so, that kind of thing. And so she came and I said, well, where do you want to eat? And she said, I'm going to go to Zach Top Dogs. And we went down there, Tony did, and we had a good oh, time. Oh, but Lynn, I was not impressed. She only ate one hot dog. I've never seen I one. Ne one. No, I've never known anyone to just order one hot dog at Zach's. I start well, with two. Well, the Jim's Tasty Freeze has gone out of business. Zach's better not go out of business. I don't I don't see how it could possibly. Here it is. Um, Tracy Thompson Stewart is the name I have drawn. She said, I love Don't get ba Give Bama a Second Chance in the rebuttal. So she's an Auburn or an Alabama <laughs> fan. So Tracy this Thompson is, this Stewart. This is still general prizes, right? I'm not even, I'm having, I'm looking, while Patrick is singing, I'm over here 
looking through my tablet saying, which one can I try? I, if y'all want me to do this every week, I will. I love feedback. You know, for years, this is Linda Helton, L-I-N-D-O. Looking forward to Saturday's show. Henry Cho is so funny. He doesn't <laughs> shy away from Wait, saying give he's me, a Christian. Give me the name again, please. Linda Helton, H-E-L-T-O-N. And for those of you who might be joining late, there's a little something that's come up, floods in uh, Nashville, and Henry's in charge with uh, being in charge of his men's ministry at his church. The last we heard, he was under a house, correct? That's right. Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm laughing at, at this woman's is, comment. She, she says, says, you're worried about the gum story, and you're going to let him sing a song like that? <laughs> <laughs> now, and see, what y'all don't understand is anytime a group of people laugh at one thing, if you can make a note of it, it can turn into a piece of material. Um, um, on I, the baton store. And I, well, let me just say this. Okay. Um, Jeannie physically tenses up every time I sing or say something because she doesn't know exactly what I'm going to say. So don't, don't blame her. Uh, and so <laughs> I Verna, requested that. Song. Uh, that's true. Verna Christian asked if it's on one on your CD, and it is. Is it? Not? Yeah, if you go to oh, Amazon. Yeah, Amazon. Go to Patrick Henry Married Man. You can download it. Patrick Henry Married Man. It's a CD. Okay, and uh, you didn't tell what's your favorite jelly. People said you didn't answer that. Do well, you, you have know, one? Whatever, I have a jar that somebody that <laughs> gave me for Christmas. <laughs> if I can get it open, so, I probably slab down some grapes. The one, the one with the least old expiration date, right? Thank you, Tony. I appreciate that. You want me to go get jelly out? No. Not, <laughs> if, it, if it's not molded over on the top, if that's not my molded favorite. Molded over on the that, not, yeah. jelly and peanut. The jelly doesn't get molded at my house. Well, no, we we eat. Well, that's because I, I've been, it's the I, it's a staple. It's the only thing. You well, eat. it doesn't get molded at my house. Because ever since I married Leslie, nothing stays in our house beyond the expiration date. <laughs> okay, well, I don't know about that. Okay, um, an example. Uh, these books have these one-liners in here, and um, I think I just casually said to Tony one day. I've uh, got to go get new pictures made. I hope they can airbrush them. I hope they can make And I have down here at the time I was 73. I'm 74 now. Uh -uh, no way. You're 77 it. now. 77. Excuse 77. me. What did I say? 74. 74. Oh, no, I'm 77. So, uh, so, but your comment was, why don't you just start saying in your speeches that you're 86? I think you look good for 86. <laughs> <laughs> so I just wrote that down so that can become Sorry. a punchline. The punchline on the baton story. I'm going to tell y'all a big secret. The punchline on the baton story, which came out in, I recorded in 73, I think. Started telling it in 73, if you can imagine. And uh, the punchline came from another story. It came from um, a story that I was telling that happened at a pageant. The story, the punchline was funny, but it didn't really add to that story. But the minute I got the baton story in Eastern North Carolina one night watching, uh, I knew I had the punchline already. So that's what you, that's what you do. And it's so much fun because left brain will say sometime, well, I, I will go somewhere and I'll tell a story, you know, work it into conversation. And he'll say, well, you about got that one down right. Yeah. <laughs> So that's, we just work on it all the time. You got a question? Okay. You're, you're saying wrap it's, it up. I was uh, well, it's too long on that. No, note. it's oh, after one. After one? <laughs> oh, no. Where's Henry Cho? Yeah. yeah. He right. I think he's still underneath that house. <laughs> house. Henry Cho, a no show. Is Henry no Cho. show. No, he no. called us. He, he is told helping. us. He's, he'll, he'll make yeah, it he's up. definitely not blowing us off. He's no, definitely he's not blowing us off. doing he's the trying. Lord's work. He's, he's doing for his um, neighbors and friends. And so, Henry, that's great. Uh, this is the seven-hour and 20-minute CD of stories that made it into the book and taping. This was fun today. Did Someone like actually this? asked if you write your own books. Who do they think would write them for you? I, know. <laughs> I do my stuff myself. I, they say you can get a ghostwriter and all, but then I'd be telling them it's not going to work. You need to be a lot more famous before you need a ghostwriter. Go, go, thank you, Tony. <laughs> I'll have to hurry. 
the um, you'll have to hurry. You'll have to all of us. I this is my hobby. I would rather put together a story and then be able to tell it and it click. And I mean, really click and the audience go nuts. And uh, if you can have a big punchline at the end and um, my biggest problem is the stories are a little long sometimes, but what we learned is you take a, a line like this when you start taking the story and if they laugh, you go up a little bit, come back down every time you, for example, if you listen to the baton story that's 17 minutes long, the last punchline is the biggest. They all applaud. But um, all through that timeline, you've got really funny stage. I think the hooker line is in there <laughs> in the middle of it. It sounds like, sounds like I'm telling a different type of material. But remember, <laughs> I shot hook shots for my talent. So let's give this away. And if y'all... you. I'm sorry again that you came and got ready, but one Henry show funny with the seven clips I put up about him this week. We'll have him another time. I'm sure we have three more people already booked. That'll be um, two of them. We know for sure are coming in. So we'll keep you in touch. This is it. So this is an important draw right here. This is our, this is our most expensive item, right? Patrick, that's Patrick right. Gets a commission because we taped this, and and we taped it with my southern accent. We didn't hire somebody, so this is the winner. And if you don't have any use for these seven CDs, it's not my seven. It, this is of the book. Then please give it to some uh, place that has folks that um, would give anything to spend some time right now, in particular with um, listening. And the person is who wins this. Oh, great. Stella Brand. Stella! Stella! Stella Brand. Hello from Sperry, Oklahoma. You have won. B R A N D. B R A N D. Mm -hmm. Okay. Like branding yourself. Well, y'all, thank you for your patience. I hope you stuck with us and we had a good time. If you want me to do this sort of thing anymore, Tony, you're putting the microphone to your mouth. Mm -mm. Why? Just hold it. I'm so aware. Someone, if y'all someone, move, I say. Someone wrote that they had found a typo on the audio CDs. <laughs> that, that, that doesn't make sense. Well, no. The in, in, in the. In, in, you knew in, there's in, a typo? No, no, no. In the intro, you said um, you might even find one on the audio. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So I'm well, sure. Well, what they find on the audio is when I started ad libbing extra stuff and then, you know, telling what. But. Um, I think we've had a right nice time, don't y'all? I think so, right. too. Thank you. See right you next nice. Saturday. She's a heck of a lot of fun, Jeannie Robertson. Oh, she's a heck of a lot of fun, Jeannie Robertson.